So the hip joint is probably the most stable joint in your body. It's really made up of three major factors that give it all of its stability. And we'll talk about why it so, needs to be so stable here in a minute. But you have a, a ball and a socket. So the ball is on the head of the femur, the bone in your upper leg. And that ball fits into a socket. It's a very deep socket and the socket actually surrounds it a little bit, gives it a little bit of bony structure to it. The second thing that makes the hip the most stable joint in your body is actually the labrum, the cartilage, the ligaments that are around it. So the labrum is a very important structure. It's a piece of cartilage that extends off of the edges of the socket and it actually creates a bit of a suction that sucks and pulls the head of the femur into the socket as well. And then you would have ligaments. You have a very common ligament that runs from the socket itself right into the ball and again its job is to pull it in. So both of those structures, their job, the socket, the ball and socket design and the labrum and the ligaments, their job is to pull the head of the humerus into the socket. Now because we never want to have two bones rubbing against each other, we want to make sure that something in a sense is pulling it away and creating that space in between the bones. That's where your muscles come in. So it's the muscles of your glutes, your abductors on the outside of your hip, your hip flexors on the front and your adductors on the inside. And what all of those muscles do is they're, they're providing stability by creating space in between the bones. Because again, you never want to have two bones rubbing against each other. That leads to arthritis. So you've got the socket and the labrum and the ligaments pulling the ball in and holding it in. And then you've got these muscles that are pulling it out and ideally that's creating this little bit of space that's in between the bones so that we have a few millimeters worth of space for the mobility to occur without rubbing and friction. Well, why is the stability so important? Every time you move that leg, whether it's to get in and out of the car, go up and down stairs, stand and put weight on it, walk, bend over, whatever it might be, you need that ball to stay in the socket. You can't have that ball coming out of the socket. The example of getting into the car, if I'm picking my leg up to put it into the car, I need the ball to stay in the socket as I lift the leg to put it into the car. I need that space to stay open. I need the muscles to be able to work to lift the leg and keep the joint open so that it can move. I need the ligaments and the labrum and the ball and socket to stay together to keep it held in place so that I can precisely pick my leg up, put it in the car, get in the car, close the door, do the things I need to do. The same would be true with walking. If I didn't have the stability in my hip joint that I need to have, every time I would try to put my foot out in front of me, my foot would be all over the place and I'd be off balance, etc. So again, that stability in your hip is what determines your ability to function and move around during the day. Most commonly what we see is the culprit of hip problems is is that there's weakness in certain muscles and typically it's a weakness in your glute muscles. Now we'll use the term glutes to mean the three major gluteal muscles but also mean your piriformis muscles, muscles called your obturators, muscles called your gemelli. There are a large number of muscles in your hip but we'll refer to them all as your glute muscles and typically what we will see in all hip problems is that your glute muscles tend to be a combination of too tight and way too weak. And so when those muscles get out of balance, they'll start to get tight. And again, when they start to get tight, they create a shift in the, in the ball in the socket. They start to put wear and tear on things, whether it be the labrum, the, uh, the IT band, the, you get a hip flexor problem, whatever it might be. But that weakness is what really is the culprit, the starter of that problem. And so getting that weakness and that tightness taken care of, that's really what we need to concentrate on. How can PT help? Well, there's really two factors. One is, if you're not having any hip problems currently, now's the best time of all to get Get your hip checked out because every time you move in and out of a chair up and down stairs walk etc every time you're standing you're relying on your hip joints to work perfectly if you're not having problems well obviously they're working well but you just like your car you get it tuned up you get the oil changed etc you want to make sure that certain things aren't beginning to happen in and around your hips mostly that glute weakness that hip weakness that allows certain problems to get started now on the other side if you're having hip problems or you've had hip problems in the past now's the time for an expert physical therapist at Loudon Sports Therapy Center to do a full evaluation of your hip. Find out what's going on with the mobility. Where are things flexible? How is your joint moving? Does it stay open when it's supposed to stay open? Is the integrity of the joint being protected? What's going on with the labrum? What's going on with the muscles? And what needs to be done for your hip versus what the internet tells you is good for everybody's hip? And what needs to be done with your hip to get that problem taken care of? 